It is an unmistakable symbol of Australia, but the koala is under threat. Urban expansion, climate change and disease have put the marsupials on the list of threatened species. Across Australia, there has been an outcry about the koala's decline. But government worker James Fitzgerald felt words weren't enough. So he purchased 780 acres of virgin forest land in southeastern Australia to create the Hammers Hill Wildlife Refuge. He says it's a sanctuary where healthy koalas can thrive and injured or diseased koalas can heal. There's not subdivision, there are not roads, there's a few fire trails that really don't get traffic. Um, and so it is rugged country, so that just the terrain kind of has protected this population. And I guess the evidence is, is that people are seeing them really regularly now. And if you went back 10 years, it was much rarer to, to hear a koala story. Just from the anecdotal evidence, the weight of it is showing that this, this population does appear to be expanding, which is good news. <laughs> Fitzgerald says genetic tests have shown the local koala population to have unique traits he thinks might make them less vulnerable to chlamydia, a sexually transmitted disease that has ravaged koala numbers in recent years. But even if these koalas are genetically strong, Fitzgerald says they're no match for the devastation caused by bushfires. It was one of these massive fires that led Tony the koala to Fitzgerald's refuge. He was found at the side of the road, badly traumatized. We believe he was hit by heat because he's got melted fur on his back. Um, he was on the ground, um, quite a depressed koala. He'd obviously been through a fairly horrific fire, uh, experience. So the, the, my understanding is it can get 3,000 degrees in front of those big bushfires. So we think the heat melted his fur. He may have fallen out of the tree. There he is. There you go. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. But Tony's story has a happy ending. After months of recuperation, he was released back into the wild, near where he was found on a property just north of the refuge owned by Max and Coral Talbot. They say they're very happy to have Tony back. It's just part of the magic <laughs> of living here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're certainly pleased to know that they're here and we hope that this, this particular area anyway will be left alone and they'll always have this habitat. Fitzgerald shares that same hope. He is now working on expanding the refuge and creating a protective trust. He wants to make sure that his koalas will always have a safe place to call home.